Surprising. Fun. Imaginative. Inspiring. It was just so different from sitting in the classroom all day. It was like more interesting to learn about it actually where it happened. It's transformed the way we think about learning and we've really made a big effort to kind of throw it open to the children far more rather than being very prescriptive and directed even at school. Um, and I really think that by opening it up to the children you just kind of you get so much more back than we would have ever expected really. Yeah. Dare to Inspire is an innovative partnership project for schools, facilitated by Durham Local Authority, the Science Learning Centre Durham, and the North East Regional Museum's hub. The inspiration behind the project was to embed creative learning outside the classroom as an integral part of a well-planned curriculum. It aimed to exploit the potential of venues such as museums and science learning centres and demonstrate the powerful impact on children's learning and development on their attainment, but equally their enjoyment, engagement and motivation. Myself, first of all, I went straight to that, looked up the number um, and found that it was Egyptian from 70 to 178 AD, which I thought was amazing, but it's still so beautiful. And you can see exactly, you can see the face. Curriculum redesign is at the heart of Dare to Inspire, using spaces and places out of school as learning zones for pupils, and using that as a basic principle for cross-curricular development in school. Dare to Inspire began by putting teachers in the position of the learner. Staff undertook an initial CPD session at the Great North Museum Hancock in Newcastle. Teachers were invited to explore their own creativity through a range of activities using artefacts and the galleries within the museum, teachers were inspired to grasp the freedom to teach creatively and given the confidence to take creative risks, be flexible with their thinking, and importantly, to allow their pupils to do the same. Teachers explored objects in a multi-sensory way, asking questions and challenging their own preconceptions, forming new interpretations and opening up new avenues of teaching possibilities. Because it's so fast and you get a chance to feel a little part of it, they get a different picture in their head as well, they create the old raggy mat into a flying carpet and it took us off to worlds anew. Get refilled and refilled and refilled and then when this happens, that's the end of the night. With a trip to somewhere like the Great North Museum or, or equivalent, um, it just gets the children so fired up and so tuned into that topic or that project that they then came to run with any of the work that you want to do with them. And to be honest, as a teacher, um, it's a more exciting way of delivering a session to children rather than trying to compartmentalise everything into a geography and a history and an art and a design technology and a science. Just the idea of doing a project on whatever it may be on. Um, and it's surprising how the children are more in tune. It does really enthuse the children. They also developed skills for creative responses. This process encourages participants, adults and children, to express individual responses to an environment or venue outside the classroom. Individual responses are taken forward into group work and extension activities in a free-flowing, participant-led direction. They initially explored the museum environment independently with the aid of a sketchbook. They focus in on a select number of things that grab their attention and note down why they are drawn to them. This could be an object, part of an object such as a pattern or texture, or part of the building itself. It's a completely personal choice. Each individual will approach this differently depending on their own interests and learning styles. They can do sketches, writing, mind maps and so on. Once this has taken place, the group is gathered back together and divided into smaller groups. Participants take it in turn to feed back their thoughts, sketches and inspiration. We didn't want to try and make it too scientific, we wanted to keep it a little bit random mm -hmm. because we thought that the idea of keeping it a little bit more random and creative would um, just make that a little bit more intriguing. But actually, the creative activity in terms of just experiencing the museum, the lighting, kind of the shapes, 
and responding to that in any which way that suited you was really fascinating and I can see how that would roll out back in school. These smaller groups are then encouraged to find patterns, themes and links between their work. In this instance, they express this using craft materials to produce a group collage or sculpture. That would be the sort of thing that we would look at, is how you would take that into sort of a big project in school. Um, something that came to my mind was looking at sort of a, the coral bed and straight away I thought of the patterns of being, um, could be turned into fashion or jewellery or something like taking it sort of that step further um, into that and looking at things that, like the pillars that had the gods that didn't have any heads sort of, I could think that the children would like to think well whose head would be on there, what would it look like, who would it be, what would they be doing, I think the sort of the questioning um, of that, questioning yourself, of looking at an object was, was really quite good, really, really good. I'm quite inspired by the idea of giving the children the freedom, um, but that is also quite scary. And I particularly enjoyed looking at the objects and, and getting to, um, adults and children to think of alternative descriptions of what those objects might be. And, um, and that, that was quite liberating, thinking what could it have been and what story could that uh, have told in the past or what does it tell now. Two subsequent CPD sessions were delivered. One session examined science at coastal sites using the Blue Reef Aquarium at Tynemouth. Lots of big sharks and rays which can have live babies, but the small ones can't do that so instead they lay an egg. Just like a chicken would lay an egg on the ground, some sharks lay... The second CPD session explored a humanities focus based at the Bose Museum, Barnard Castle. Over the three training days, teachers were supported to use the skills learnt to develop this approach for their pupils. Creative response techniques were further developed using mixed media such as digital cameras, videos and laptops. Group responses were collated using laptops and software applications such as PowerPoint and Movie Maker. Schools across the region already make visits to museums on day trips and engage in training opportunities offered by the cultural sector. Where Dare to Inspire differs is that schools are encouraged to go back to that venue they visited the next day, then the next day after, and the day after that. Bringing the pupils back encourages them to be better prepared for learning on subsequent days, encouraging them to really engage and for the experience to really start inspiring them. Um, lots of good ideas to talk about artefacts in a different way. And we've got lots of um, innovative ideas for delivering literacy and maths and science in a much more creative way. Teachers were then supported at that venue when the school delivered the multi-day learning programme with their class. Pupils produced collage and sculpture, drama and role play, explored fashion and history and utilised costume, artefacts and employed scientific techniques. 7.4, 10.9 possibilities were limited only by the extent to which resources were made available. Pupils showed their group work to everyone else and in many cases developed into very creative and abstract learning journeys. Because at school we've like, all got it's like little things and like plastic toys or something where you can actually see now so you can touch and you can feel and you know what it could be like because it does like the exact right information. Advantages of this approach mean the teacher or group leader can spend time observing the group and letting children lead the learning and direction the experience takes them in. What you didn't know was that the sea dragon was the sea dragon and Teachers have the freedom to embark on their own individual learning journey alongside the pupils or just aid and facilitate the process and discussions.
Looking for this? Three for magnificent! You've called me out my crime, but you haven't caught my body yet. What do we do now? Cheers him. You can't even catch up with me. He's getting away. I'm not frightened. <laughs> It's given me confidence because I really, the, the thought of school trips um, unnerves me. And we've done a whole school trip before where it was laid out exactly what we were going to do. And that was comfortable for me, but I hadn't thought about what I would do if I took my children out and it was me who was kind of leading them, whereas now I've got lots of ideas. And I know now the children can lead the way a little bit and it's not just me feeding them, I'm more facilitating what's happening rather than leading what's happening. Work produced by the pupils, both as individuals and as part of a group, serves as a reminder of what inspired them during their visits, and they can continue to develop work around this afterwards. That meant that more underskirts were made. This style is completely different to that one, as this one goes out at the top and in at the middle. The extended visits help to identify individual interests that can be explored further, and personally engages children in their visit. There are no rights and wrongs in what individuals produce, which takes the pressure of attaining certain standards off the participants. Follow-up work in school has added to the overall impact of the extended visits. Because it kind of draws you in more because it's more exciting and it's like a different atmosphere so you're more interested in working sitting in the classroom more. And learning about John Bowes is in his like child it's better than just sitting in a classroom and going off a whiteboard. Dare to Inspire has given teachers the space and time to develop strategies for taking creative risks both in and outside of the classroom, to experience and learn in a totally new way, to be creative and to think differently and to look at spaces and places outside the classroom in a new light. And I really think that by opening it up to the children, you just kind of, you get so much more back than we would have ever expected, really. Yeah. And, but certainly the approach will definitely be rolled out, that kind of um, open-ended, creative, exploratory approach when visiting a venue um, will certainly be embedded. And also going on your trip at the beginning of a project rather than kind of as a treat at the end, that's definitely going to be changed back at school. Dare to Inspire is a move away from the traditional approach to visits outside of school, a step away from gallery worksheets, trails and lead tours. It allows teachers and children to freely explore spaces and be guided by their own thoughts and interests. Are you normally allowed to choose what you want to learn about and follow it? Not no. so much. Is that something you want to do more of? Yes. yes. Yeah. What's the difference between doing that? Does it help with your learning? I think it excites you learning more because when you're in the classroom you have to like work and write and that. But when you're like in a museum or somewhere else you can explore and draw all the things and do all the things that you wouldn't get to do in the classroom. It makes it a lot more interesting because in the classroom you always like you stay there whereas in a big place like this there's lots and lots of places to explore and um, it's nice being able to choose what you do because it makes it more exciting rather than having to do something. And also, lots of people choose different things, so it's interesting to see what other people have chosen to do as well. It's exciting because it's a bit different. You don't, never know what's on the next corner. And it's a bit more exciting than like sitting in the classroom and doing as you're told, because you get to choose more. You've got more of your own opinion in it. I, I really like working in the museum because it's really fun and exciting with all the different rooms to look at. And you find out like more about things and you get to see like the real object. It considers what children need, where their interests are, and where their interests will take them to help them follow their inspiration and develop their creative thinking. It challenges their teachers to allow them that freedom as part of their learning and development. Absolutely. You know, five days, one day, and I realise a one day trip for anything is just not enough because the children miss so much. The most important thing on a one day trip is when are we going to go to the shop and when are we going to eat our pack lunch and how long is it until we're there. But coming back and back and back every day, the children were just more and more inspired and where they started the week, their learning just 
has gone supersonic. Because it makes you more interested and then when you go back to school you want to do more. Dare to be creative. I don't want that anymore. But you said you want No! Hush up. Take it away. Dare to think differently. If you're in school, they can see it and they can draw it, but you can't actually see it. Dare to come up with new ideas. Brilliant! Dare to inspire.